Valeria versus Jaina. You asked for it. Tremble before the might of the elves. Hey guys, how's it going? So, uh, today I am just going to play a little bit of Hearthstone and I'm going to do a few quests. I have... Uh, okay, so he just quits. Okay, so that's a good first game. Uh, I have uh, the quest to play uh, a bunch of... Uh, hunter cards. So I created a quick deck with a bunch of hunter cards. The deck is actually surprisingly good. Uh, unfortunately, if that mage didn't uh, um, concede, then I would have done really well since that hand that I had there was quite amazing. But uh, the deck actually does really quite well. Uh, normally, if you do like whatever. Uh, uh, 30 shaman cards or 30 priest cards or 30 warrior cards or whatever then usually it doesn't work out that well since uh, not a lot of the cards have synergy and all of that but surprisingly enough all of the hunter cards basically have synergy a good deal of synergy so uh, the 30 Hunter deck is actually really quite good because you can do stuff like uh, the Dynomancy. Uh, you do the Dynomancy and then you um, put the Dynomancy, the plus 2-2, two, two, onto uh, Rat Pack. And Rat Pack then summons four little rats instead of uh, the usual two since uh, Rat Pack summons the amount of um, rats equal to its attack power. So uh, apart from that there's obvious synergy with King of Beasts with the amount of beasts that you have on the field and Ram Wrangler also if you have a beast on the field I've played a few games where I play Ram Ranger and then it summons like King Crush. So it's fucking crazy sometimes. But other times you summon like a Alley Cat or a Jeweled Macaw or anything low like that. But most of the times you will get something really good from Ram Wrangler. So that is really quite awesome. So let's see here. Knuckles isn't too bad, but unfortunately he's going to draw at least two cards from that Acolyte. I could play the Tundra Rhino and then hit the Acolyte with it once, but hmm. um, that's not awesome. But having the Tundra Rhino on the field allows me to next turn play uh, Knuckles as a charging minion, or basically any of these minions as a charging minion. So, I guess we will go for Tundra Rhino. So, basically, uh, if you get the 30... Um, uh, the 30 Hunter card quest thing, or even the 50 Hunter card uh, quest thing, then you can do really quite well, since usually it's a schlep to beat your opponents with uh stuff like, like like that like 30 priest cards or whatever uh, stuff like that but in this case it's actually really quite good so we will play that and that's another combo you play the infested wolf and then your opponent plays something with three attack or higher then you play the starving buzzard and kill your infested wolf then you draw two cards automatically no from the uh, uh, starving, buzz starving Buzzards effect. So that's another thing that is really quite awesome. So I could just ignore the Sylvanas to be honest. There's nothing wrong with that. I can mm. just attack it into his face. Um... So, yeah, I guess let's do this then. Play that. 
that and then just go for his face. He will die eventually if he doesn't use his hero power each turn. That's one thing that is really irritating about Hunter. I usually never play Hunter because I hate Hunter. It is one of my least played classes, but um, sometimes with times like these when you get the Hunter quest thing, then you really have no alternative. Okay, so that's really not bad at all. Oh, but he plays that thing in the way. So, let's see if we can get anything that can help us get past this thing. Poisonous will help, that's good. And then we can play this and infest. That's another very good combo. The infest uh, with the camel because the camel puts two minions on the field. Unfortunately, it didn't pull out my web spinner. Usually, when you play the camel, you hope that it will pull out the web spinner. Since if it pulls out your alley cat or your jude, um, jeweled macaw, then it's really not all that good. And here comes a brawl, probably. Let's see. Yep, there's the brawl. And luckily one of these guys uh, survived. That is the best outcome for me because if it stole any of my other guys then uh, it would be really quite bad for me because he would then get an extra beast. So let's see. Here I could play that and then that and that. That allows me to draw two cards. But that doesn't right put a deal. huge... Um, amount of cards onto the field. I think rather Ironfur, Grizzly, Ram Wrangler and Jeweled McCaw will be the best. The beasts obey me. Okay, Raptor is not too bad. I paid 5 mana to get a 6-5 basically, Welcome so even if it summons something as small as the raptor, you still get value from it. So here I will play the scavenging hyena, the haunted creeper and the king of beasts. So we play that, play that. King of Beasts. The Hunter uh, deck just really has so much synergy. Basically all of the uh, cards synergize. So that's really really good. And even in a deck like this which traditionally doesn't have a lot of late game staying power. Due to basically none of the minions. Uh, having a good late game effect, uh, the infest uh, basically guarantees you to have a lot of late game cards because the infest gives you um, an extra beast obviously for every guy that you can get it on. So unfortunately these guys aren't beasts so the King won't be a 5-6, it will just be a 3-6. But next turn I can do the infest and since he's already used both of his brawls, um, it really seems like I'm in a very good position. So we can do the King of Beasts and Web Spinner and infest. And we finally get the Dynamites. So as you can see, you just get constant uh, beast synergy and 
if you can just get a relatively good infest, like on on three or four minions with both of your infests, then you have so much late game power because you just constantly have beasts in your hand. It's really quite ridiculous. And holy shit, the guy got very lucky there. So I don't think we have lethal right now. So we will probably use the dynomancy and that in order to turn this guy into a 7-1 but that means one of these guys are going to stay alive so i think we will keep ragnaros alive we don't really have an alternative so we will do that and we will play the jungle panther i think yeah jungle panther and then we will run this one in there. And just use our hero power. If we play another beast, then... Yeah, we might get our hand way overdrawn with the Why amount of back? beasts that I am going to get. Because I'm still going to get... Uh, three beasts from all of this so we don't want that to happen and unfortunately it hit my face that's certainly not good but we fortunately have enough taunting power I think so let's see I have to play this quickly because I am probably going to run out of time if I don't so we put Houndmaster on there. And then we have 6 damage, 7, 8, 9, 10 damage. So that's not enough yet. So we will play that. And Dynomancy. On top of this card. So now basically we just have to hope that Ragnaros doesn't hit our face again. In the previous turn I think he had like a 20% chance to hit my face. And now because there's 7 on the field he has a... I think 15% chance to hit my face, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. And fortunately he doesn't have a way to activate my Gromash. So let's see, can we still survive? Uh, well, we will just kill that thing basically. So that is a definite way to still survive and then we just have to uh, hope again that uh, Ragnaros doesn't hit our face. Okay, that's good. So we have uh, one away from lethal right now. We are one away. So we will do that. Hit that in there. Hit the rest to the face. And then just throw out a bunch of beasts like that now with a total of eight targets there's like basically a 12 percent chance of him hitting my face back to work okay don't hit my face well played Okay, that's good. So that was really close, but to be honest, I got extremely unlucky by uh, immediately drawing the mine from the Iron Juggernaut and getting hit in the face when there was just like a 20% chance for Ragnaros to hit my face. So all of that was really quite unlucky, but fortunately I still managed to... Uh, 
eke out the win. And as we see, the Warrior had a very late game deck. Ragnaros, Grommar, Sylvanas, Justicar throughout. It's a really late game deck. Most decks would struggle to be able to win the late game against a deck like that. And I still had a shitload of power left in my hand. I mean, I had a crazy amount of uh, staying power still left. Uh, simply because of the infests, because the infests gave me like um, eight or nine beasts. Uh, so the infest is really an OP card. So with that quest being done, the Hunter Mastery quest to play 50 Hunter cards, I am now going to play with my Priest deck a little bit. So as you can see here with... Uh, Hunter, I only have 33 wins ever, and I've been playing Hearthstone for, since the beginning, since beta, so it's like 3 years, I think, uh, that Hearthstone has been out now, so, uh, but with the uh, Shaman, it's even lower, <laughs> I really despise Shaman, I only have 14 wins with Shaman, but with other uh, classes, like Warrior, 180, uh, uh, Warlock 350 and Paladin is my most with Paladin I have 400 wins so uh, I've really been concentrating on other classes simply because I fucking hate Hunter it's really a gay class and I don't like playing ga gay classes and Shaman is even gayer than Hunter almost so we will just play a few games with the uh, Priest deck and I have done previous videos on the Priest deck, so I'm not really going to spend much time explaining to you guys what the Priest deck does. It's is just basically a Dragon Priest. It's really basic. You just uh, constantly throw out uh, uh, dragons and uh, you just uh, outvalue your opponent with uh, the cards like Dragonet Operative and never spite historian so we will throw that one away we want the dragon in our opening hand so hmm, unfortunately it seems like i'm going to have to throw away my north shard cleric just in hopes that i can get a, a dragon and fortunately we do get a dragon so we're gonna be able to at least do something in turn two because if I didn't get the dragon, then in turn 2 I wouldn't have done anything. I would have just basically passed my turn 2. Uh, because I wouldn't have played Never Spite Historian uh, on its own. But we get the Wormrest Agent. So I'm going to play the Wormrest Agent instead of the uh, Never Spite Historian. So that I can get a little bit of a bigger presence on the board and... The Wormrest Agent is much better at being healed, so if he played something, then I would attack and heal my uh, Wormrest Agent. And here, I think probably the best one is Hungry Dragon, so uh, that, uh, that at least gives us something to do in turn 4, um, depending on what he does. Uh, if he doesn't do anything now, then I will probably play the Hungry Dragon. And then kill the one cost minion that it uh, summons with uh, these two guys. So here, in order to stop him from just outright killing this guy, I might want to play the Defender of Argus. But Defender of Argus on these two guys is pretty weak. So unfortunately it seems like I'm just going to have to take the punch or I could stop him from killing this thing in one hit by playing the hunted dragon and killing the one health guy or the one cost guy that it summons so I think that's actually better so let's play that for fuck's sake that's probably one of the best one cost minions that he could possibly have gotten because any other one cost minion would have just died. But now he gets extra health on that guy. And he can just kill this guy with a single hit. So that was a really really bad uh, outcome for me to be honest. 
because Priest doesn't really have any AoE, they just have Holy Nova and the Dragonfire Potion to deal with that guy. So that guy is going to stay on the field for quite a while, unfortunately. And now, because of that uh, Blood Imp, I can't use my Blackwing Corruptor on that guy and then run the Never Spite Historian in there. So that uh, Blood Imp is really quite a big irritant right now. So we will play the Dragonet Operative to get a little bit of a bigger uh, guy on the field. And we can also immediately see what type of deck our opponent is running. So Innervate is pretty common. Uh, really we can't see uh, or we can't really determine what type of deck our opponent is running from those cards, unfortunately. If we saw something like a Maligos or uh, Kun the Forgotten or Aviana or anything like that then we would immediately know what type of deck our opponent is uh, but unfortunately so far we don't really know uh, what type of deck he is running and that's a swipe probably and yes it's definitely a swipe but so far we are doing really quite well and thanks to the moonlight portal that i grabbed i can just heal this guy so that's really quite good and we get a pretty good uh card a pretty average one i mean i paid six mana for a five five so it's not too bad it certainly could have been worse and fortunately we have the Shadower Death to deal with that guy. So that's good. And unfortunately my positioning here wasn't really good. But I couldn't have done anything about it. Because the Moonglade portal always puts the minion on the right side. So unfortunately we are just going to have to, instead of playing the I Defender know. of Argus to make these two guys stronger we are just going to have to play the cabal talent priest you wish so that to is unfortunate forever. but it is unavoidable and then we just run everything in the face he's really quite close to being dead so i don't think he will be able to get much uh, value from his its So this guy is really running quite a strange deck, um, he has seemingly uh, jade cards in the deck, so he's probably a jade druid for, uh, for the most part, but then he also has a bunch of other weird little cards like Burgly, Bully and Medivh, which you don't normally see in uh, jade druid. So. Yeah, certainly a weird little deck that this guy is running. Um, but we still have lethal, unfortunately for him. Oh, okay, he just gained 3 HP. Maybe we don't have lethal right now. Let me see. So we obviously throw that on there. And then we obviously do that. And we obviously do that. And we still have lethal. Teranda versus Gerash. Victory on death. Give me strength. Okay, unfortunately we don't get a dragon. Um, so we could either throw away Nether Spite Historian or throw away Northshire Cleric. I think we will throw away Northshire uh, Nether Spite Historian and keep Northshire Cleric. Even though if we play Northshire Cleric, 
and he has war axe then it's really bad for us but to be honest you can't do much about that if he has war axe then that's just life so it seems we are going up against a gay uh, pirate warrior And we will play the Twilight Whelp, probably. Oh, I actually didn't realize that it wouldn't be a 2-3. I just assumed that it would be a 2-3, so that was obviously incorrect. So, that was a little bit of a mistake there, unfortunately. You should never assume uh, anything. You must always look at your hand. Unfortunately, I made a mistake there, but we should be able to recover from it. Uh, Pirate Warrior, if they don't get a very good opening, then uh, Priest can usually uh, beat them without much problems. So we will play that and we will keep the coin for the possible Holy Nova on turn 4. Okay, we will just play the Cabal Talent Priest as a 3-4. There's not much we can do about that. Blood and plunder. Okay, the Wormrest agent is really quite good, so we do that, and then we heal ourselves, and then in the next turn, depending on how many cards he plays, we will either do a Holy Nova, or we will do a Dragon Fire Potion, or if he doesn't damage that guy, then we will do the Bookworm on uh, that guy. Okay, so that guy didn't take any damage, so we will do the bookworm on that guy. So, unfortunately, uh, despite the uh, mistake that I made at the beginning, I just didn't have any way to win this game. There's basically no way to uh, have changed the outcome of the game because uh, Holy uh, Nova is really quite a late game card, Dragonfire is really quite a late game card, and then apart from that I had to play my Cabal Talent Priest as a 3-4 without the battle cry, so really the opening hand was just really quite bad as you can see here i drew all of my late game cards and basically none of my early game cards so anything like wormrest agent earlier would have helped blackwing technician uh, shadow word pain in order to kill that three four of his the blood sail cultist i think in the end, that blood sail cultist hit my face something like three or four times, which is crazy. So, if I just got the Wormrest Agent or uh, Shadow Word Pain, then the outcome of the game would have been vastly different. But usually, as I said, Priest can deal with uh, Pirate Warrior uh, very good. They just basically need to get the... Uh, Twilight Guardian taunt or the uh, Wormrest Agent taunt and then from there on there's basically no way for the uh, pirate to get past and hit your face. Tranda versus Rexa. 
Okay, this hand isn't too bad. Uh, okay, with the Never Spite Historian, it's actually gone from a not too bad hand to a really good hand. And our opponent is running Prince Malkazar. You don't see that often in Hunters. So we will coin out the Nether Spike Historian in order to start killing those uh, alley cats. And then we will play the uh, Wormrest Agent in the next turn, probably. Okay, so because he can kill our Never Spite or uh, the Wormrest Agent uh, just like that, we will play the Never Spite Historian instead of the Wormrest Agent. And this guy won't be able to outlast us with late game, so we will take an earlier card, which is a 4 cost card, instead of the late game uh, Yesera. The Yesera might seem like an obvious pick, but uh, this game won't be reaching the very late game, so we really won't be needing the, uh, what do you call it, the Yesera. Okay, that's a good 50-50 that I won there. So, because he's obviously going to try to hit my face each and every turn with the uh, hero power, with his hero power, I really need to uh, try and use my hero power each and every turn also. Because otherwise uh, I just might run out of health. So I'm just going to play it very slowly. Uh, because as I said, I know I will outlast him in the late game. I don't need to get value from my Brand Bronze Beard with stuff like Brand Bronze Beard. Dragonet operative or anything like that since I know I will win the late game so uh, it's really just a thing about uh, keeping my health as high as possible because as we can see uh, he is running cards like Argent Commander so he is clearly a very aggressive uh, Hunter, despite him putting in Prince Malkazar, which is a weird choice, um, we still need to watch our health uh, with the amount of charge cards that he has. So it's really quite good the fact that uh, Bram Bronzebeard is staying on the field for as long as it is. So we take Emperor Thorazan and we take Hemet. Hemet might actually come uh, in use. It might be useful. So we will definitely take Hemet. So he's actually a weird hybrid deck it seems. Stuff like Emperor Thorazan you would usually only see in very late game uh, decks, but he also have ch has uh, aggressive uh, cards like Glaive Zuka and two Argent Commanders and stuff like that. So um, he's really running quite a weird deck, to be honest. But fortunately, we are able to get a lot of value thanks to the Bram Bronzebeard being able to stay on the field. So as long as Bran Bronzebeard stays on the field, we have absolutely nothing to fear. With this deck, if Bran Bronzebeard stays on the field, then your opponent will never be able to outvalue you, since 
you get four cards from his uh, deck with the two uh, Dragonite operatives and you get four extra dragons thanks to the Nether Spite Historians. And that is apart from all of the value that you get from stuff like Defender of Argus and Cabal Talon Priest and all of that. So here we attack that in there, that in there. Uh, the Hemet Nessimweri on there. And then we basically just heal our guy, I guess. No. Uh, yes, I think we will play that since this will get us an extra 1-1. One, one. So we can't really do much else. It will give us an extra 1-1 one, one on there instead of healing that guy. Because if we heal that guy, then he's going to run both of his hyenas into my brand bronze beard in any way. So uh, I think this is the best option. Oh, that's a very good power shot that he got, uh, got there. But there's really nothing that we could have done about that. And now he basically just needs to um, uh, concede because, as I said at the very beginning, there's absolutely no way how this deck, his deck, is going to outvalue me. So that is why I took a lower card like Hungry Dragon. There's really no need for Yesera. If I took Yesera, it would just be overkill. So we will just do that. So I have to commend this guy on playing a non-gay uh, deck. He's certainly playing a few Rashi cards like Argent uh, Commander and Glaive Zuka, but overall this guy doesn't uh, isn't running a gay deck. Uh, because if he was running a gay deck, then he wouldn't put stuff like Elise, Starseeker and Emperor Thorazan into his deck. Although, just as I say that, just as I show him a little bit of respect, he is BMing me by not uh, ending his turn. So, um, I really shouldn't speak too soon. So now we just play that on the Thorasan, since as long as the Thorasan stays alive, we will basically not be able to die. So we run that in there, heal that, run that in there. think keep the death in case he plays faceless uh, sh what's that other thing faceless I can't fucking remember and Cabal Talon Priest is kind of good Northshire is kind of good um, honestly I think if I throw any of these away I'm just going to get more late game cards and we don't want that it's already bad enough that we don't have the coin. I usually always want the coin in my opening hand. Um, simply because the deck performs better with a coin. So, uh, unfortunately we don't have that. But we will just hope that he won't be able to uh, get the upper hand with uh, that other weapon that has the... Th Three attack if it has spell damage we just basically hope that he won't be able to get that and we played the uh, what do you call it the uh, Wemrest agent without the uh, benefit of uh, a dragon simply because against a shaman 
you really have to push for board control. So uh, we really can't uh, play the game as we would normally do with uh, getting all of the value with like the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the extra two attack because honestly, I don't think we're going to need that extra amount of value. Simply because uh, we will outvalue our opponent, but uh, we won't last if we constantly go for the value plays. So here we will just uh, throw that on there so that he can't kill the Northshire. And then in the next turn we will heal our guy to hopefully be able to keep him alive. Unfortunately he used the Hex, but he used the Hex on a one cost minion, so it's actually really uh, fine. I don't have a problem with that. So we will take the Twilight Guardian. We will attack that in there and we will play the Nether Spider Storian. Dragonet Operative, always take the Dragonet Operative, there is no better card uh, that you can get. And now basically the only way for him to gain back the board and possibly win against us is if he has Volcano. Uh, if he doesn't have that then we will basically just keep controlling the board and there's no way for him to win after that. And he probably realized that. The thing about his deck is you could see that it is a gay rush deck with the Patches Pirate and ship scan and all of that. You can see that it is a gay rush deck. And fortunately my opponent was smart enough to realize that there's no way for him to win against me with a board like that. Teranda versus Gerash. And we go up against a warrior. Um, if it is a gay rush pirate warrior, then this hand will be pretty good. It's not an extremely good uh, hand against a gay rush warrior. As I said, you want Shadow Word Pain and Worm Rest Agent against uh, gay rush decks. So we at least have one of the. Uh, cards which will, will be good against that and if it is a late game warrior or a taunt warrior or anything like that then it's simply about outlasting your opponent with value. This deck does have a little bit of difficulty against a taunt warrior because as soon as they become Ragnaros um, it's really quite difficult to outvalue the eight damage that they are throwing out each and every turn so um, honestly I would want him to be a control warrior instead of a taunt warrior since we can win against a, a control warrior but a taunt warrior is going to be a little bit difficult but as we see he is not a uh, control he is not a Taunt Warrior, since the Taunt Warrior obviously always plays the um, quest in the first turn. So it's possible that he's a Gay Rush Warrior or Control Warrior. And the fact that he didn't attack with the War Axe probably indicates that he is a a uh, control warrior since if he was a rush warrior he would just attack my face with a war axe okay so i will play the brand bronze beard here uh, if he kills it then so be it, at least it will absorb one of the charges of the War Axe. And if he doesn't kill it then it's basically game over for him. But uh, honestly I think we will be able to outvalue a Control Warrior without getting value from Bran Bronzebeard. If I wanted to play very late game 
then I would keep Brand Bronzebeard until turn 8 and then I would play Brand Bronzebeard with Dragonet Operative or anything like that. But as we see, he can't deal with the Brand Bronzebeard, so we are uh, rewarded for playing a little bit risky. So as we can see immediately, he is running Reno Jackson, which means we must not try to rush him down since uh, it won't help. He's just going to play Reno Jackson and he's playing Nazoth. So those are two very important things that we need to remember. Overall, Brawl will be the best thing for us and Sneed's old Shredder will also be pretty good. So those are two very good um, discoveries that we got there because it tells us exactly what type of deck our opponent is running and it tells us exactly how we should play against our opponent from now on because we don't want to um, play in a certain way like play too much onto the field and then he just brawls us into uh, uh, into death so we don't want that to happen obviously so now we basically know that we shouldn't uh, play too much on onto the field and we should keep his armor low because he probably also runs shield bash or shield slam in his deck so um, we don't want him to gain, gain too much armor either I wield the power. So, with a board like this, I, I'm willing to keep the board just like this because he will honestly have to brawl this board in order to stay alive. So, there's really no need for me to play more stuff. If I do play more I stuff, no then I need to be able to back up all of that stuff that I am playing. So here, in order to play around Sylvanas, I will flood the board. So we will play that, we will play that, and we will attack that in there. Uh, first, let's see. Actually, we don't need to attack that in there. We can just rush him down. So that is indeed what we will do. Uh, we could have attacked the Dragonite operative in there and then it would have stolen any of them and possibly the worst one f that it could have stolen is Bram Bronzebeard. If it stole any of the other ones then I would have been fine with it. It would have been bad if it stole the Blackwing Corruptor then but not as bad as if it stole the Bram Bronzebeard. That would have been really bad. Okay, so it stole the Dragonet Operative, which isn't that bad, to be honest. It's certainly not as bad as the Bram Bronzebeard. So here we will just play the Sneeds. And then after that, depending on if he plays a big guy, we will be able to kill it with the uh, Shadow of Death. Or we can even do the Brawl, since if we do the Brawl, then our guy will survive. So that will be very good. And we get a 7-7. That's pretty good. It's certainly not the best, but it's pretty good. Okay, so I don't think he will be running a dragon. I really don't think he's running a dragon in that deck. So we could just do the death. Um, hmm. I wonder. Will there be better targets for the death? I wonder. Um, I think... Playing the death is okay. It's not it's not awesome, but I think it is a pretty good way to use the death. 
and he doesn't have a dragon in his hand at the moment, so we will just do this. And we are managing to keep his armor low, so even if he armors up right now, he won't be able to shield slam the medivh uh, to death, so that's good. You always need to keep the armor down on uh, a control warrior when fighting a control warrior. Okay, so we managed to beat this guy and as I said, um, there's really, uh, even though control warrior gets a lot of value like there's really a, not many decks that will be able to outvalue a control warrior this deck the dragon priest gets way more value than a control warrior so there's really no need for me to have kept bran bronzebeard but it turns out that by playing bran bronzebeard i was e able to get even more value like a massive amount of value uh, thanks to the double, um, uh, I think I got the double Wormrest Agent uh, buff, and I also got the double um, Dragonet Operative, and honestly, after that, I could have uh, beaten him uh, um, extremely easily with the amount of value that I got. Even if I didn't get that value, if Bram Bronzebeard just died, I still would have been able to outvalue him, since... This deck just gets way more value than uh, the Control Warrior. And against the Control Warrior, the only things that you really have to remember is that you mustn't play too much, too much stuff on the field because Brawl is a really a game changer. If you get stuff like 4 or 5 minions onto the field and it plays Brawl, that can severely destroy you since... He's playing one card, and that one card is destroying four or five of your cards. So, he immediately has a four or five card advantage over you. So, you really just have to play around a brawl, and just play two or three minions. Even if he armored up a shitload uh, in that turn, I still would have just kept the Medivh and the... Um, Dragonet operative on the field since that is 12 damage per turn that I can hit my opponent's face with so there's really no need to play extra uh, things onto the field so yeah that's basically how you ba uh, beat control warrior and it would have been pretty bad if we reached uh, into the late game and he played Nazoth because Nazoth would have brought back Infested Tauren, Sylvanas Windrunner, Chilmore, and any other stuff that he would have played after that, like the um, uh, Sneeds, Shredder, and all of that. So that would have been devastating, but fortunately I uh, got the Brawl. So the Brawl would have been able to clear up all of that. So even if he did that, uh, then I would have just cleared it up with a Brawl. Tranda versus Anduin. The light shall bring victory. Okay, we get Twilight Guardian, which is pretty good. It's a dragon. We want at least one dragon in our opening hand. And Twilight Whelp is really not all that good. Defender of Argus is really uh, not good in the opening hand. But fortunately, we get the Nether Spite Historian. If I didn't get the Nether Spite Historian, then I wouldn't have played the Twilight Whelp, since I would have wanted to keep the Twilight Whelp in order to uh, be able to trigger the Twilight Guardian on turn 4. So, yeah. Uh, here, I think, even though Deathwing Dragonlord might seem good, in a deck like this which has a lot of dragons it's not good because your opponent can play light bomb so because it is wild mm. they can play light bomb so uh, i will rather take the nefarian instead of the uh, other card which w might seem better but honestly 
if uh, Deathwing Dragon Lord pulls out all of your cards and your opponent plays Night Bomb, then you just lose. You lose like 100% of the time. So, yeah. Oh, that sucks. A mistake. Not quite. Welcome to the exam. Okay, so it seems we are going up against a Nazoth slash uh, Death Rattle uh, priest. It's a little bit strange that he isn't running. Um, what's that? Uh, the secret? Uh, the secret that uh, you have to play um, eight Death Rattle minions or whatever. Uh, because, I mean, it would seem obvious that you would play that thing in a Death Rattle Priest, but okay, maybe he doesn't have the Legendary or he doesn't have the mana, to, uh, the uh, dust to craft it or anything like that. So, so far it's going really, really good. Uh, we have the board and we are uh, looking good with our hand. We will run out of value. Um, by turn 7 or 8, but fortunately we will be able to get a lot of value with the Nefarian, so that should not be a problem. Take her. Okay, um, choices, choices. I can play Defender of Argus here if I want to. Um, I can play Never Spite the Storian, but against a Nazoth deck, which is really good in late game, I honestly actually want to get Bran Bronzebeard with the Never Spite the Storian, but I don't think I can really wait for that amount of value. But fortunately, I got the Dragonet Operative, which will be really, really good. So, that is quite good. And we will play the Wormrest Agent and heal that guy. So that it is out of the range of uh, Holy Nova or that other thing that deals 3 damage to everything. I forgot the name, but you know what I'm talking about. So we just basically need to control the board, but we don't need to play too many cards since we could get obliterated by AoE. And now if he is choosing the uh, 10 mana card and the polymorph uh, thing, then it will be very bad for us, obviously since he will polymorph all of our cards. So here I think we will play the Defender of Argus. And that plus that equals for 7 damage. Then we can hit that in there also. I guess that's pretty good. Or we could actually play the... No, no, no. We don't have enough mana. Okay, so we will just hit that there, hit that there, that there, that there. And it pulled out one of the weakest cards. I would have wanted it to pull out something like Wormrest Agent. Uh, since Wormrest Agent isn't useful in the late game. Uh, but I guess it's fine. Okay, so that was a pretty good one. He killed... Well, the... Uh, uh, black uh, wing technician was on 1 HP. The dragon was on 1 HP. North Shark or the... Uh, uh, Nether Spite Historian was on 1 HP. So basically he just killed the uh, Defender of Argus, Cabal Talent Priest and a little bit of the Twilight Whelp. Priest, the light serves me now. And we get pretty good cards. It's late game cards, so it's very good. 
if I had gotten like two no power word shields or something like that, then that would obviously suck. And here the choice is pretty obvious. We attack that in there and then he has to attack his Sylvanas into my guy. So are there any alternatives to that? Um, well, we could attack that in there and then use the Blackwing Corruptor on the Nefarian. Um, but that's not really useful, to be honest. So I think rather we will flood the board a little bit by probably doing this. Begin. Hit that there. Um, then playing the dragon at operative, I think. Uh, Valence chosen will probably be the best. And that there and that there. So then basically we just have to hope that it doesn't steal either of the big cards. If he has Shadower Death then obviously he can like Shadower Death this one and run that in there and then hope to steal the Nefarian or something like that. But um, we will see what he does. Okay, hopefully it steals the Nefarian. Okay, that's good. Okay, so overall that was a good outcome for us. Oh, and we get the Shadower Death, which is actually better than using the Holy Fire, because I would have just used the Holy Fire. Oh, and we get that. That's also very good. So, other cards that we have seen so far is uh, Potion of Madness. So, we need to remember that he has Potion of Madness. And... What else did we see? I don't think we saw anything else that is really good. So, because he hasn't played any duplicates yet, we can certainly assume... Holy shit that he is also a Reno deck, that he probably has Reno in there, so, yeah. Okay, so, I think we are just going to ignore the Deathwing, uh, since we don't have a really good way to deal with it right now. So, I will just... Um, I wonder. Probably play this in there. And that there. And heal myself and just attack the face. Let me change your mind. Okay, finally we get the brand bronze beard, but unfortunately we don't really have um, a very good combo with it. So we will hopefully get our Dragonet Operative soon, and then we can do Dragonet Operative brand bronze beard in order to refill our hand a little bit. Because at the moment we don't really have any good cards in our hand. Okay, so, are we able to survive? He has 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 damage. 
Yeah, he probably has lethal. I don't think there's any way for us to survive against that amount of damage. It's quite unfortunate. If we did have a uh, Dragonfire Potion, then we could have survived. If we had a uh, Shadow of Death, we could have survived. But honestly, I don't think there's any possibility of us surviving hmm. against this. So let's see what guy we can pull out. Yeah, that doesn't really help. Unfortunately, we are dead. But the guy got really quite lucky by uh, getting the uh, uh, Deathwing right after I already played my uh, Death, my Shadower Death. And he also got quite good uh, uh, amount of da uh, damage done with his uh, Kazakus potion. It basically wiped most of my board, uh, like, I don't know, I don't count exactly, but I'm sure it was like at least 20 worth of stats uh, on my side of the field that he killed. So, um, yeah, he got pretty good value from everything, and then apart from that, he got the Nazoth before I was able to get any good combos of like the Dragonet operative with my brand bronze beard if I got that earlier it would have been really quite good so yeah I do have the quest to play priest cards so I'm just going to play a bunch of priest cards in order to hopefully complete that quest so yeah guys that's pretty much it um, I think I played five or six games and I only lost two of them so, yeah, most of the times uh, I win... Oh, I got the quest at least. Most of the times uh, I do pretty good with this deck, but today I went up against a lot of late game decks. It seems that the uh, meta in Wild has shifted a little bit away from the gay rush decks because it used to be almost uh, exclusively gay rush um, warriors like pirate warriors and uh, shamans rush shamans but it seems that it is now much more late game uh, decks but as we saw i'm able to outvalue just about any uh, late game decks like the control warrior and that it just uh, it's just against this priest that that uh, we just fought uh, that nazoth honestly destroyed us if the Nazoth was at the bottom of his deck, we would have won that much easier, but um, the Nazoth is just such a fucking powerful card that as soon as you uh, get it or your opponent gets it and you don't have AoE, then you lose because AoE is the only way to deal with uh, the uh, Nazoth. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you next time.